واتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله والله بكل شيء عليم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى we'll be talking about how to memorize some tips when it comes to memorizing and some techniques when it comes to memorizing as well when it comes to memorizing as as a student of knowledge you will memorize many different things but generally you will memorize mutun ilmiya now these texts are either going to be nathr which is a, a normal text or it's going to be a nadham which is a manduma a poem a poem or the second thing you want to memorize is the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the third thing is that which you have benefited from the books that you are studying whether it's the ta'rifat taqsimat qawa'id dhawabit anwa' right fawa'id okay so i'll start off with some general points and they yani they can be applied to most of what i'm i'm going to be talking about number 1 is seek the aid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the tawfiq of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will never achieve anything Okay, seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to memorizing, when it comes to understanding, when it comes to seeking knowledge, when it comes to everything in life. Without the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never succeed. The next point is pick a specific time that you're going to memorize in the day and a specific time in the day when you're going to revise. Okay, this time must be suitable for you. Don't look at what everyone else, everyone else is doing. Look at what is suitable يعني, to you, suitable for you, okay? Now, this time you're going to revise, you're either going to specify that for that which you are memorizing right now, or it's going to be a revision of that which you have memorized previously. Why? Because if you do not revise what you have memorized, you'll forget it, okay? The next point is, Make sure you pick a place that is suitable for you to memorize, free from distractions. I would say pick a room that is tight. There's no distractions. There's nothing on the wall. You're sitting close to the wall. All you have in front of you is the book that you're memorizing. Your phone is turned off, or maybe it's in a completely different room, and you're just, yani you've, you're putting all your efforts into memorizing. Nothing else. Okay. The next point I will say is make sure you have a list of things that you want to memorize and make sure you have a goal for how many days you want to complete each text that you are you're going to memorize okay so let's say you have a text that's 10 pages and you're able to memorize a page a day then you're going to memorize a page a day and you're going to write next to it 10 days because you're going to finish it in 10 days. This is very important. Why? Because if you don't set goals, you won't reach the place that you want to reach when it comes to ilm. You won't reach that high level that you're aiming for. Without goals, you won't, it's very difficult for you to accomplish anything. So set goals. Set a certain time period you want to finish it within. Set, set a certain amount of pages that you memorize, a certain amount of lines of poetry that you memorize every single day. Okay? The next point is make sure you pick a matan that is mutamadun fil fan. Pick a text that is relied upon in the specific science that you're studying. So an example of that is when it comes to Nahu, Arabic grammar, a text that is relied upon is al fiyyat ibn Malik. The al fiyyat of Ibn Malik, the, the th over يعني, a thousand lines of poetry of Nahu by Ibn Malik. The ulama, they have explained this and they teach it a lot. And it's what they recommend a student of knowledge to memorize if he wants to become very grounded in, in Nahu. Okay, it's a it's a it's a manduma that is mu'tamadun fil fan. It's a poem that's considered to be relied upon in the science of Nahu. Don't pick something else. Okay, that's not relied upon and doesn't have many explanations. Stick to what the people of knowledge stick to. And on top of that, make sure you pick a version, a copy of that text that is reliable, that has no mistakes, that's been corrected by people of knowledge. Okay? Um, yani one that I would recommend, recommend or mutun that I would recommend that are that have been corrected and checked for any mistakes 
are the mutun that have been put in the program of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Qasim. Yani the, 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 the version of those mutun that are in those books are very, very good. Okay, the Sheikh himself, it's said that the Sheikh himself has checked it for any mistakes or if there's any. The Sheikh has checked it to see if there's any mistakes or any issues. Okay. Now, um, the last point I will mention is make sure you have a electric counter. Okay, this is an electric counter. What's the benefit of an electric counter? The reality of memorizing is that it's going to be takrar, repetition. Yani you can ask. A million people in the world, how do you memorize? How did you memorize the Quran? How did you memorize this matan? How did you memorize this poem? They will all say to you the same thing. I memorized it by repeating it so and so times. So, uh, a yani, hundred times, two hundred times, three hundred times, five hundred times. Repetition is key to memorizing. And part of repetition is keeping count of how many times you have repeated it. Now, what's the benefit of an electric counter? The benefit of an electric counter is that if you're memorizing, you have the kitab in front of you, you're memorizing, okay? If you don't have an electric counter, you're going to have to count it yourself. And it's going to occupy you and busy you from what you're memorizing. But once you have an electric counter, you put the counter behind the kitab, and you're memorizing, and you have the kitab in your hand. Every time you've read it, you count, you click, you click, you click, you click. And you'll be surprised by how many times you actually repeated it. Because you're not concentrating. You're not concentrating on counting it, you're just concentrating on solidifying your memorization, okay? And one thing I would say, okay, and this is a tip when it comes to memorizing, is Memorize certain, set about a hundred times when it comes to repetition And I'm not talking about repetition of just reading I'm talking about repetition after you have, and you have a brief memorization of it So let's say this page now, or these few lines of poetry, yeah? Let's say three, four, five lines of poetry, or this page I have right in front of me. You can say it off the. T you can say it without having to look at, at the kitab. It's not very, very strong, but it's at a level where you can repeat it a few times. Now, what you're going to do is this is the time you're going to actually start counting how many times you're repeating it. Okay. So let's say you're going to do it a hundred times. Then the first twenty times, say it without looking in the book. Then the next 20 times, look in the book. Then the next, after that, 20 times, say it without looking in the in the specific kitab that you're memorizing from. 10 after that, the, after that, 10 times, make sure you look within the kitab. And up until you reach 100. So split, uh, 10, 10, 20, 10, 20, 10, you know? Why? Because look, if you repeat it 100 times without looking in the kitab, you might end up at the 100th time you have repeated it, you've made a mistake. And you've been repeating it wrong You've been repeating the line of poetry wrong Where you look at the kitab and you're like Oh, I didn't even repeat it the correct way And I've repeated it so many times So I wasted all of that effort So that's why it's important to just and you Look back at what you're repeating from Okay So make sure you have an electric timer An electric counter I mean Okay Now when it comes to mutun ilmiya don't concentrate on what other people say or what other people are doing. Look at what is يعني, suitable to you, what you find easier for yourself. If you find easier to memorize a nathar, a text, memorize the text. If you find it easier to memorize the nadam, the manduma, the poem, memorize the poem. Okay. Now on top of that, if you find it easier to memorize from pocket size, okay, memorize from pocket size. If you find it easier to memorize from um, Something that's not pocket size, a little bit bigger, then memorize from that. One thing I would say is, and this may benefit you, and I found this to be beneficial. When the text is smaller, I find it easier to memorize from a smaller text. When the text is bigger, I find it easier to memorize from a text that is bigger. Okay? Why? Because, let's say we have al fiat al Maliki. It's uh, a hundred... It's a hundred pages on this, you know, this print of Ibn Jawzi. It starts on page nine, ends on a hundred and nine. Now, if it was 
this in this print, okay, it would probably be 300 pages, 250 pages, but it's 100 pages, which means it's less pages for me to revise when it comes to revising, and it's less pages for me to connect between when it comes to connecting between the pages in my mind, okay? Because in your mind, you're going to remember, okay, this page starts with this, it ends with this. Now, what's the next page start with? If you have less pages to, to يعني, have to go through that thought process to recall it, then it's going to be a lot easier. يعني, trying to recall 100 pages like that is easier than trying to recall 200, 300 pages like that. Okay? And it's just a tip, just to see if you can benefit from that. Now, let's move on to um, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam apply the same thing I mentioned. Make sure specific time, specific time to memorize, to revise, specific place, specific amount of times that you repeat it. On top of it, act upon it. Yani act upon that which you are learning from learning from the Mutun Ilmiya and act upon that which you are learning from the Ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Salaf would say, Kunna nasta'inu ala hifth al ahadithi bil amili bihi. Yani we used to a way that would solidify our memorization of the things that we have memorized is that, is that we used to act upon it. Okay? We used to act upon it. Um, now, when it comes to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi do the same thing that I mentioned. But uh, what do you start with? I would say start off with Al-Arba'un by Imam Al-Nawi. After that, and you want to يعني, memorize a hadith al-ahkam, then if you if you feel like you, you don't have the ability to memorize much, then just stick to umd al-ahkam. But if you want to memorize more, then I would say memorize Bulugh al-Maram, that pick a print that combines between Bulugh al-Maram, umd al-ahkam, and al-Muharrar. To where the asl is Bulugh al-Maram, and the ahadith that are found in Umdat al-Ahkam but are not in Bulugh al-Marama have been added to it and the hadith that are found in Al-Muharr but are not in Bulugh al-Marama also added to it as well um, there's a new print I think it's, it's that's come out I think it's been out for about a year, year and a half the Sheikh himself uh, he put it all together in one kitab but he put it under the Tabwibat of Ibn Hajar okay someone may say to you okay but يعني, the tabwibat in the different books are the chaptering in the different books are a bit different. But the haqiqah is at the end of the day, you want to memorize the ahadith of the Prophet. The tabwibat are beneficial, but the ahadith of the Prophet is the maqsood. Hifdha ahadith in Nabi is the maqsood. So you can benefit from the tabwibat later on, but if this is making it easier for you to do, to memorize all of these ahadith of ahkam, from these three different books in one specific single book, and yeah, isn't that a lot easier than just memorizing three different books? Okay, if you don't want to do that, there is another print. It's quite difficult to find, to be honest. Um, I think Markaz Hufad al Sunnah in Al Qasim have printed it, uh, where they printed Bulugh al Maram. Okay, after Bulugh al Maram, the extra hadith from Hamdat al Ahkam they print, they put it together. Okay. And then after that, the extra hadith from Al-Muharrar, they put it together. Okay, so it's separate. They separate. They separated it, but they put it all together in one book. But after one book ends, the, the other one open. The other one is right next to it, and the other one is right next to it as well. But it's all within yani, one cover. Okay, so it's one mujallad, one volume. I might have to go all the way to Qasim to try and find that. Um, but that, that's up to you. Uh, so, yani, and on top of that, then you can move on to the Zawaid. Um, the extra, uh, the extra hadith from Sunnah Bi Dawood, Sunnah Tirmidhi, uh, uh, Sunnah Nasa'i, Sunnah Majah, um, the Zawaid of Musnad Imam Ahmed, and the other Zawaid that have been put together. And look, always remember this: when it comes to memorizing the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and even the Mutun, there's no rush. Don't think that I have to get everything done by the age of 30 or 35 or 40. Otherwise, I won't be able to memorize after that. There's no rush. Take your time. Even if it comes down to memorizing one, two, three a hadith a day. Take your time. Solidify your memorization. Memorize up until you die, bi ta'ala. And you'll benefit. Right? Slow and steady wins the race. Always remember that. Okay? Take your time. There's no rush. Now, um, 
The last thing I would add is when it comes to the taqsimat and the ta'rifat and the dawabit and the qawaid and the stuff like that that I mentioned, then make sure you have a specific notebook for that. Okay? That notebook, you're going to memorize from that notebook. Okay? And you maybe have a specific one for each fund, and I've mentioned this before. Something in usul tafsir, something in tafsir, something for uh, um, usul, qawaid, aqeedah, you know, some of the different abwab in aqeedah. You have ta'rifat, taqsimat, qawaid, fawaid, all in one book, but it's different funu. So it makes it easier for you to gather those different principles, taqsimat, dawabit, ta'rifat that you find from different books and just put it in that specific notebook that's specific to that specific science or that sub-chapter in that specific science. Okay, so it makes it easier for you to recall and to memorize it and to solidify it uh, within you. The last point I will mention, and some of the ulama of hadith, they would do this, is that once you have memorized something or you have read something and you want to keep it within you, Tell it to someone And this person you're telling it to Doesn't necessarily have to be a person who's going to understand it Okay So I'll give you an example Al Imam Zuhri he would do this He would come home And he would ahadith. He would recite a hadith to, to the servant in his house Now the servant girl doesn't know what's going on Right So she would ask him why are you doing this And he would say that I just wanted to say it to someone And it's just so I can Um Solidify it within me Why? Because sometimes when you memorize something And you read something And you say it to someone And you explain it to someone Yeah It stays a lot longer in your mind Than it would if you were to just Memorize it So يعني, Try some of these tips that I've mentioned And بإذنillah you will benefit بإذنillah ta'ala after, Obviously after the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, shadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.